Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. Today, let's try something kind of new, kind of different. I have no idea if this is going to work or go anywhere or anything, but let's go shopping. Let's take a look at some new stuff, some used stuff, and see what we might be able to find for, in this case, a microphone. Uh, and let's set a budget of like $100. This question comes up a lot. Uh, microphones, you know, just cheap microphones. Mice get expensive, so... Let's take a look uh, at a couple sites online and see what kind of things we might uh, be able to find that are interesting to you, interesting to me, in our home studios uh, as kind of potential mics, maybe some entry level or maybe some, um, you know, used stuff uh, get a good deal on. Uh, I don't know. Let me know if this uh, has uh, any use or interest to you, all right? Well, let's get started. All right, for new stuff, you know, as far as kind of like what represents like a fair retail price, I'm a little partial to Sweetwater. Uh, now, I have my favorites. Uh, I'm sure you have your favorites, so, um, you know, whatever. But uh, let's go ahead and go over to Sweetwater.com and let's take a look. So Sweetwater, let's go to uh, Studio Recording and Microphones. Now, they don't have a way to just filter all microphones by price. So I guess let's start with condensers. We'll take a look and see if there's any interesting looking dynamics in there. So let's set a price range. Let's include $25 to $50. Let's include $50 to $100. And let's just sort uh, price low to high. And just so we can kind of start at the bottom of the budget, work our way up from there. All right, so it looks like this is going to be very dominated by Behringer in this uh, price segment. Um, so, But it looks like we have some interesting stuff to look through here. So I see the uh, Behringer C1. I have used this one myself. And honestly, I was pretty impressed with it. Uh, you know, at the, that $50 kind of price point. It's not a fancy mic. Uh, there's no bells and whistles, so there's no low cut. There's no uh, DB pad or anything. It just is what it is. Now this is billed as a large diaphragm condenser, but the C1, there's, it is definitely not a large diaphragm. It's actually a small diaphragm. It just looks, you know, the, the body, it looks like a large diaphragm, um, but Sweetwater is actually incorrect on that one. So let's see if, let's scroll down to the um, tech specs here. And so, um, microphone, uh, bah, 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 diaphragm size, they have a 0.63 inch, um, which I think that the threshold or, I, I, actually, I don't know what the threshold is, but I, I typically consider a large diaphragm condenser as like a one inch capsule inside of it or a one inch diaphragm inside. Uh, this one at a 0.63, I think kind of puts it more at a, maybe a mid diaphragm. Oh, we can see our frequency response. It goes from, you know, 40K to, to 20K. That's pretty good. Max SPL handling, 136 dB. So that is uh, obscenely loud. So, I mean, I guess you could mic a guitar cabinet with it or something. Uh, they don't report like self noise or anything. Now that was the kind of the one knock I had on the C1 was... It was, it was kind of noisy, fairly noisy, uh, to where once I recorded like many vocal tracks, like maybe eight or 10 vocal tracks, um, that, that noise, that hiss, background hiss kind of built up. Uh, so you know, have to do a little bit of creative uh, gating or expanding or something to keep that under wraps. But really, not a bad, uh, not a bad option at 50 bucks. All right, let's keep looking here. Now they got the uh, C1U, so that's just the USB version of the same microphone. So if you don't have an audio interface, I guess you could do that. Uh, we have some small diaphragm condensers here. Again, Behringer, so we got the C2 and the C4. Uh, I don't really know anything about these. I've never used them, so, uh, but if you're looking for a super cheap pair of maybe drum overheads or a stereo pair of, I don't know, mic and acoustic instrument or something, so. And take a quick look, you know, it's the exact same diaphragm size as the C1, which is kind of funny. So I have a feeling it's probably the, the same capsule in a different format. Add a, a pair of them for, what is that, 60 bucks? Uh, you probably get about what you pay for. I've never used them, so I can't really uh, speak to them. Uh, I am going to just skip over any handheld microphones in a home recording situation. Like, I, I'm not really interested in a handheld microphone. Um, maybe you are, so sorry if I skip over something that looks kind of interesting to you here, but in the interest of time, uh, let's not pay any attention to handheld style microphones. Now the C3 I am interested in. I, I would like to uh, give this a try. So it costs another $10 over the C1. 
Uh, now this does add a low cut filter and has a DB pad. So it, is it just the exact same thing as the C1 except it has the, uh, the filter? So same diaphragm as the C1. Um, not quite the same high frequency detail as the C1. Uh, a little better D, uh, SPL handling. Uh, and this one does have a, uh, a self noise reported and 23 dB. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, I don't know, a fair amount of uh, self noise as far as I could tell. But yeah, that's definitely another interesting um, option in this sub $100. What I'm looking for is kind of like well-rounded microphones. If it's going to be your first microphone, um, something that's going to be a little versatile. So something like that C1, the C3, probably pretty versatile. Uh, we do have an offering from Samson, their C01 at the $80 price point. So, you know, we're kind of getting up there now. Uh, it looks pretty much just like the, the Behringer C1, you know, so no, uh, no switches, no pads or anything. So just, you know, plain old microphone. I'd be a little kind of curious about that. I wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't doubt if the, if it's the exact same mic, uh, actually, no. So it's got a slightly larger diaphragm, um, doesn't quite, uh, it, it extends lower than the C1, but not as high as the C1. Uh, about the same SPL handling, uh, no self noise reported here, but yeah, that's another interesting option, you know, for a, a, a vocal mic and probably work pretty darn good on, on acoustic guitars. I mean, I found that with the C1, worked great on acoustic guitar, uh, worked pretty good on vocals. All right, what else we got here? Let's uh, scroll through some of these. Okay, now here at the $90 price point, we see the uh, AKG Perception 120, the P120. Uh, I don't really hear much about this microphone anymore. About, you know, 10 years ago or so, it was all the rage for home studios. Uh, I think mainly because of its price point. So at 90 bucks, uh, that's not bad. You get your, you know, your cut, you get your 20 dB pad, which is pretty good. Uh, let's take a quick look at those specs here. Um, so pretty comparable uh, diaphragm size. So not a true uh, large diaphragm. Um, 20 to 20 frequency response are uh, 130 dB without the pad and 150 dB with the pad. My goodness, that uh, 150 dB, um, that is uh, really loud. That's going to be painfully, painfully loud. So you could stick that right in front of a uh, guitar cabinet. Uh, self noise, you know, th th this 19 dB figure seems to be pretty average, um, you know, for what we're seeing here so far. All right, yeah, that's that's uh, definitely interesting. Um, so the Perception 120, okay, I'll have to remember that one too. Now uh, we got some stuff from Golden Age. Uh, this one I'm kind of curious about, the uh, Shure PGA 181. I'm not familiar with it at all. It's at the $94 price point. Let's take a quick look here. I mean, it's it's cool looking. I you know I like that kind of exposed uh, diaphragm and um, rivets and everything. That's just kind of a cool form factor. Uh, kind of sleek black uh, powder coated kind of case to it. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of neat. So let's see kind of what it's, uh, uh, not a whole lot here in the tech specs. So it doesn't go very low, uh, but it does go up to 20K, 138 dB max SPL, which is plenty. Doesn't have any reported figures for self noise or anything, but uh, I would be really kind of curious about uh, about that. And you know, any of these mics that, that I don't have experience with, um, you know, if you're watching and, and cringing at home, you know, let us know down in the comments um, if you have experience with any of these and you know what you think about it. All right, what else we got here? I think there's only probably a couple others uh, that I'm really interested in here. So a heavy hitter here in this sub $100 range is definitely the uh, AT2020. Uh, I hear this on uh, YouTube channels and podcasts and everything. I think for spoken voice, uh, it's not a bad microphone at all. Um, not too long ago, I mixed a friend's project where as far as I know, he was using the AT2020. Uh, he's kind of a, like a loud, aggressive singer. I didn't really like it uh, on his voice. Um, I just don't think it was quite right for him. But I've heard this plenty on, uh, on YouTube channels and, and podcasts for spoken word, and I think it sounds uh, really good. Uh, but let's take a quick look at his specs here. So, you know, we're, we're looking at that same uh, 0.63 to 0.66 um, inch uh, diaphragm size. 
This one does go from 20 to 20. Max SPL handling 144 dB, so that will handle just a crazy loud source. Self noise at 20 dB, which from what we've seen so far, like not super impressive, but you know, for a single track. Now, if you're gonna layer that, um, you know, five, 10, 20 times, uh, that noise is gonna add up, but I think 20 dB is gonna be okay for a track or two. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely uh, a contender here, under a hundred bucks. That's um, you know, it's a sharp looking mic. I uh, one of these days will get my hands on one and give a give it a test myself. Another interesting option here is this SE X1A. Uh, I don't really know much about it. Actually, I don't know anything about it. Um, it's uh, I like the form factor. I like the uh, chassis and everything. Uh, so we you know we've got a. 20 dB pad, it's a cardioid pattern, we got a low cut switch, uh, you know, kind of the standard things we've seen so far. And let's just take a quick look. Yeah, it's that same uh, 0.66 diaphragm size. Uh, it does go 20 to 20, which is cool. 130 dB um, max SPL. Uh, self noise down here at 16 dB, so that's a, you know, a little quieter than the other ones we've seen. Uh, low cut filter engages at 100 hertz, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, this, um, I am very curious about this. Again, if you've used uh, this mic, let us know down in the comments because, uh, you know, it's in the right price range. Uh, it looks cool. Uh, how does it sound if you've ever used it? So let's take a look here at the uh, Behringer B1. Again, right at the top of this $100 budget. And uh, the B1, yeah, it's got that big old fat grill on it there. So let's take a quick look. And yeah, so the B1 actually has like a true one inch uh, diaphragm. So I, I, I would definitely put that in the large diaphragm category, unlike any of the other ones we've seen so far. Frequency response goes from 20 to 20, max SPL is 138 dB, uh, self noise 13 dB. That's the quietest one we've seen so far. That's uh, kind of curious. Low filter engages at 75 Hertz. Interesting, okay. And uh, we got a 10 dB pad on it. I mean, that I think that is also a very attractive option. Uh, it's the quietest one we've seen so far. Uh, although, yeah, it looks like you have just have a choice between either a low cut or a 10 dB pad. Just It looks like we just got one switch. So it's either flat or we get a cut or we get the uh, pad. But that's actually really interesting. For a hundred bucks, a uh, true large diaphragm, one inch uh, diaphragm, I like that. So yeah, we've seen some uh, we've seen some good options in this uh, in this price band. Uh, uh, you know, pretty much anything we've looked into, I don't think that I would be ashamed to use at all. Um, I, I ha in all my years, you know, a lot of these microphones have been out for a long time. So in all my years, I haven't really heard anything particularly bad about any of these. You know, that that SE X1A is kind of the the newcomer here. Uh, be kind of curious how uh, he performs. Anything else? Oh yeah, speaking of newcomers, Blue Ember. So Sweetwater is saying that this is a new microphone. I have never seen this one before. Uh, kind of a curious form factor. It's kind of shaped like the old like AKG, uh, like C12 kind of microphones. Uh, looks like kind of no frills. Uh, yeah, I don't see any pad or... or uh, low cut switch or anything. Okay, let's go take a look at his specs and see. Uh, looks like they don't have a diaphragm size. They're just saying it's a small diaphragm, uh, which really isn't much different uh, from any of the other ones we've seen. Um, 38 to 20 uh, frequency response. Got a pretty good uh, max SPL. All right, so those are some new options. Let's not even, I'm not even going to go through dynamic mics. This is going to take too long. Those are new options. You know, when you buy new, you get, you know, warranties and you get, you know, kind of guarantees from the retailer. You can, if it breaks or if it shows up broken, you can always just send it back, get a new one shipped right to you. But when it comes to value for dollar, maybe you're more interested like in the used market. Uh, you can kind of get, you know, more bang for your buck in the used market, but you do, you know, forfeit uh, your, uh, you know, warranties and, and things like that. So, but let's take a quick look at uh, some used options. Now, when it comes to used music gear, I prefer reverb. I like reverb a lot. I know there's a lot of people that don't like it as well. And honestly, I'm, you know, heard some con concerning things about how they, um, you know, treat 
sellers when it comes to disputes with buyers, but as a buyer, and here we're buyers. So let's go take a look real quick at, uh, at Reverb. And let's go by category. Let's go to Pro Audio and Microphones. And uh, yeah, we don't have a way to filter by price yet. Let's say see all listings. There we go. Now we can filter by price and we are looking at microphones still. So let's set a price max of $100. All right, so in this $100, we got more handhelds. We got a pair of Behringer B5s for 72 bucks. That's really not so bad. Uh, we got a Behringer B2 for 75 bucks. Yeah, yeah, instead of 99, in excellent condition. That's not so bad. Here, let's just click on that guy real quick. And uh, any more pictures than that? No, nope, just pictures of the case. Um, yeah, that actually does look to be in pretty good shape. I don't see any dings in the uh, in the grill or anything, so that's pretty good. And they got the make an offer active, so um, five dollars shipping, so eighty bucks total. Um, yeah, yeah, not not such a bad thing. Make them an offer and uh, see if you can come in under that. We got a perception two twenty here for uh, seventy five bucks, which um, wasn't that what we saw it for new about? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that's a just a great deal. We got a EV664. Don't know anything about that guy. There's one of those Samson CO1s. Uh, a Stag. I'm not really familiar with Stag, but um, uh, yeah, let's just scroll past. More handhelds. There's a Behringer C1 for 40 bucks. Although, you know, new they only sell for 50 bucks, so maybe offer them a little something lower for that. This is Sennheiser E609. If you're uh, trying to mic a guitar cabinet. SM, SM48. Now, now, can't really say I'm a fan of the 48. Got a sure green bullet. Here's a uh, AT2020 for 65 bucks. That's not such a bad deal. All right, let's just go on to uh, page two here and uh, see if there's anything worthwhile on page two. I'm not going to scroll much longer than that. Uh, more AT2020s in that 55 to 65 dollar range. That's not so bad. Got more handhelds. Uh, here we go. A Sterling Audio ST51. For $26? What? A sterling for $26 and free shipping. And it says that it's in very good condition. Interesting. So yeah, a little scratched up, a little scuffed up. Uh, doesn't say anything else about it. Just great sounding, affordable, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So what do these actually go for? Let's take a quick look and let's see if does like the Sweetwater sell those doesn't look like Sweetwater sells them but let's take a look at uh, musician's friend well unavailable so I take it they're discontinued so getting a, a an accurate gauge of what it's really worth uh, looks like you know eBay you get them for 50 to 70 dollars let's take a look at recording hacks a lot of times they have some good info about um, you know, the uh, setup and specs and everything. So we're talking about a 25 millimeter diaphragm. That is, how does that translate into inches? Tell us Google. So that's almost a, uh, a full inch uh, diaphragm. So really a true large diaphragm. Uh, max SPL 134, self noise at 22 dB. So kind of noisy compared to what we've seen so far. But uh, for a full, like a true large diaphragm condenser, I would be really curious about that guy. And somebody's selling it for uh, $26 and free shipping. Uh, I'm actually curious if that thing actually works. That is really cheap. All right, what else we got? What else have we got? Let's just take a look and see if we can find a couple more, um, couple more options. Here's an AT2035 for a hundred bucks. That's not bad. Uh, the AT2035, yeah, we're not going to get much uh, info, but uh, let's take a quick look at that. And uh, let's see. Yeah, let's just look at the manufacturer's page and let's see if uh, Audio Technica gives us any uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. 80, 80 hertz cut, 10 dB pad, and yada, yada, yada. Let's go to specs. So it goes 20 to 20. 
max sound level 148 and 158 without and with the pad wow that's um you know that really really will handle some punishment 12 db uh self noise that is uh, the quietest one we've seen so far doesn't really tell us about the the capsule itself it just says element is a fixed charge backplate permanently polarized condenser but it doesn't tell us the size all right well i'm not going to dwell on it but uh a quick look at the uh frequency wow that is a really flat microphone you get a little bit of a lift up there in the uh, high frequencies above 2k a little bit of air up there in that like uh 10 to 15k huh that is that's looks like a pretty solid microphone um and man at 100 bucks you can make an offer free shipping you know i don't know maybe maybe offer them 80 90 bucks and kind of see where the negotiation goes from there uh yeah yeah i like the looks of that what else have we got here here's a uh, sure sm57 now like honestly if you're looking for your first microphone i think the sm57 is a fantastic first microphone it's one of those jack of all trades master of none kind of microphones um i, I don't love it because i think it's the best microphone around but uh, it's really rugged if you buy it you're gonna have it for the rest of your life now one word of warning uh buying a used uh, SM57s, the SM57, the SM58 are two of the most counterfeited microphones on the planet. So um, the odds of getting a fake one, uh, you know, in the used market, uh, you know, relatively high compared to other microphones. But, uh, you know, just just be careful, you know, th think about it twice and, uh, you know, look for any warning signs or anything. But uh, this guy looks like it's in pretty darn good condition. Of course, there's just the just the one photo of it and here they don't have the make and offer so 75 bucks i think is too much for a used sm57 even one in good shape um, and the reason i say that is here on reverb we can click on this uh, find out more and up here at the top we can see this view in price guide and so we can see that you know a, a, a used price range it's 55 bucks to 75 bucks. So this guy has listed his at the very high end of the used range and doesn't allow people to make offers on it. So honestly, I'd look right past this one and look for one where I could make an offer. Um, as a seller, you're wanting to list closer to this price. And as a buyer, you're wanting to buy closer to this price. And it looks like, you know, that's pretty accurate. You know, it looks like most of them are going excellent condition for 75 bucks. But still, it's Reverb. When, when you don't allow people to make offers, you kind of defeat the whole purpose of, of a site like Reverb. So um, I, honestly, I, I don't like to do business with people that don't allow negotiation. So, uh, you know, I, I would, uh, you know, find a good, a good used one, offer somebody, you know, 55 bucks plus shipping and kind of see where the negotiation goes from there. You know, don't lowball them. Don't offer them five bucks or anything. But uh, I think you could uh, walk away with a pretty good deal. Uh, I think the SM57 is a terrific first microphone. You can sing into it, you can play guitar into it, you can mic a cab, mic a drum, mic hand percussion. You know, you can use it to hold open your door <laughs> as a doorstop. Uh, they're, they're just, they're well made. You're going to have it for the rest of your life. All right, I'm not going to drag this out too much longer, but let's just kind of see what else is on page one here. We've got an SM58, uh, you know, it's a good alternative to the SM57, but the, uh, the ball end, um, I think, just makes it a little harder to position. If you're trying to mic a cabinet or a drum or something, I, I kind of prefer the SM57. Uh, we've got another uh, E609, good for micing your, your guitar cabs. Uh, so here's an SM57 for 65 bucks in good condition. Uh, I can't make an offer on it, but um, yeah, looks, you know, just a, a little beat up, but uh, not bad. Yeah, that might be worth uh, looking into. Honestly, I wish uh, they listed it. A little closer to uh, fifty-five dollars and sixty-five. We got an MXL nine ninety. Uh, Ninety-five dollars is too much. Um, uh, you know, I made a community post just the other day where um, musician's friend was selling them for sixty bucks, brand new. Um, typically, they sell for ninety-nine, I think, brand new. Sometimes they'll sell them for seventy or eighty. Uh, I think ninety-five is way too much for a used one. Uh, this one is listed in excellent condition. Oh, this is, oh, okay. This is the 990 and, um, uh, what do they call that? The 993, I think, uh, set. So that's set for 95 bucks. Okay. That's not bad. 
I could do that. Uh, 991. Okay, yeah. So that's a 991. Uh, I don't really, you know, I've got the 993. Uh, I don't really like them very much, but, uh, I, you know, they're fine. Uh, I, I like the 990 quite a bit better. Yeah, so that's, uh, you know, if you're looking for a two mic setup, 95 bucks, you can make an offer on that. Maybe walk away with a little bit of a deal. That's not so bad. Uh, what else we got here on page two? Uh, we got some more AT2020s, the USB version of the AT2020. And uh, we got another C1 and handheld stuff. And, you know, honestly, I would uh, walk away from anything that uses a hardwired um, quarter inch uh, input. I think that's just going to cause more problems than it's um, ever going to solve in your home studio. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not going to click through. I'm not going to drag this out any longer. This has already been uh, uh, long enough. But yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's this kind of thing, like if you're in the market for your first microphone, or if you just have a low budget looking for a microphone, is this kind of thing, you know, helpful at all? Um, you know, I, I just want to kind of start a conversation. Anybody that's uh, used any of these mics that I haven't used myself, let us know down in the comments, you know, give us kind of your, uh, your experiences and, um, you know, whether you, did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you think it's a good deal uh, at its price point? I also just wanted to kind of show you like some of the tools I use to look for used gear. I've bought uh, several of the things in this room or that used to be in this room. Uh, we're, we're moving, so yeah, you can kind of notice the lack of guitars and amps in the uh, background back here. But uh, I, I bought a lot of that stuff off of Reverb and off of Sweetwater and Amazon and Musician's Friend and Guitar Center and you know all these online uh, retail outlets and used outlets. And, you know, this is just kind of some of the research I do. So uh, I, I don't know. If you enjoyed this, let me know, you know, drop a like, drop a comment or something. Just kind of let me know if you hated it. Eh, yeah, you know, you can do that too. All right, that's going to do it for me this time. And I'll see you guys next time.